When Allah accepts tawbah, He doesn't just forgive your sins. What does He do? He takes your evil deeds and replaces them with good ones. This is the nature of tawbah. It's a very powerful act of Allah's mercy and it's an extreme act of Allah's love. You find in the Quran, Atubu, I accept tawbah. I. Tawbah is extreme mercy. I. Not we, but I. When it comes to extreme punishments in the Quran, for example, when the followers of Isa alayhi salam asked him to spread, to send a table spread from the sky. Right? They asked him for a table spread from the sky. Isa alayhi salam's first response, Ittaqullah. Fear Allah, have taqwa of Allah. What are you asking for? And this is appropriate for Isa alayhi salam because he is the last of the messengers to Bani Israel and they've been asking for miracles for generations. And after seeing the most amazing things, they still don't have iman. Their hearts are still hard. So now you're still asking for a table spread, you're still asking for a miracle to see. Allah Azza wa Jal did say He's sending it down, but He sent a warning with it. And what's the warning? If anybody disbelieves after this, then it is I who will torture him with a torture for sure that I have never tortured anyone with. Very strong language and the strength of the language becomes even tougher because of what word? I instead of we. So there's a difference between how they're used in the Quran. But one last point that is not commonly noted and it's very important to note, it's beautiful about the Quran. People who get confused about the use of the word we in the Quran don't read Quran carefully enough. Whenever the word Nahnu occurs for subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, right after or right before, either there's the word Allah or there's the word Rabb. Both what, what for version? Singular. So it's never confusing that is it really plural or is it one? Immediately the singular form is used. For example, even in this surah, inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr. Right? But then, as you go forward, you'll find the word Rabb. You'll find and we'll, we'll discover it, inshallah ta'ala. Okay? How did Allah teach his Sahaba, Allah, the, the Sahaba of the Messenger? How did Allah teach his Messenger himself? How many years did it take to learn the Quran? On occasion, 23 years. The occasion is coming, the ayat, the lessons are coming. And they're being internalized little by little by little. So we learn from that Quran is a long-term study, even for ourselves. That's even part of the sunnah now. The Quran is not something you can just casually just read through it like you read a newspaper or you finish a textbook. I read the Quran. You can't do that with the Quran. It takes time to internalize. It's something deep. It requires deep study, right? So this, the word anzalna for the first heaven. And from there, down to the, the Messenger وسلم, over the next 23 years. Found in a hadith, this is found in many athar of the Sahaba. The gist of it is, it is called Laylatul Qadr because the word Qadr means estimation, determination also. Determination. Allah Azza wa Jal Himself, you know, He is Wallahu ala kulli shayin Qadir. Same root, same root. Allah has estimate and control over everything. But you know how there's a, a 30 year plan or a million year plan, but then there's a year's budget, right? Or the actions that need to be taken for that year. In Lata'if al Isharat, this is actually something really beautiful Al Fushayri rahimahullah wrote in the 4th century. I want to share the quote with you. First of all, it is a beautiful night in which Allah decreed mercy for His close friends. May Allah make us from them. The worshippers of Allah realize the worth of their own selves in this night. Qadr again, the qadr of their own selves, meaning the appreciation of their own selves. What that means is, the people who take advantage of this, this night, they realize what they are worth to Allah. Because if you're not worth anything to Allah, you'll sleep through it. You won't take any advantage of it. Okay, so the, the ones who really appreciate Allah, find what they are worth to Allah in this night. Qadra nufusihim. Wa yashhadu fiha al-arifun qadra ma'budihim. And those who really seek to recognize Allah, they appreciate the one that they're worshipping in this night. They really find an appreciation of Allah like no other night in this night. Allah knows everything already, but He lets His angels know of what the plan is for this year. What is what is Allah decreed for the people for this year? He informs the angels of that in this night. So for that year, the, basically the execution of Allah's plan is dedicated or, or is delivered to the angels in Laylatul Qadr. That's the first thing for that next year. وَقِيلَ إِنَّهَا سُمِّيَتْ بِذَلِكْ لِعَظِيمِ قَدْرِهَا وَشَرْفِهَا This is the other thing. Qadr not just means estimation, calculation, precision. It also means honor, nobility, dignity. So it's called the night of great dignity and nobility also because of its great nobility. 
then kada and a zahri calls it that too wa qila summiyat bi dhalik li anna li ta'at fiha qadran azim this is beautiful and it's called the night of appreciation qadr is also to appreciate and it says that the mufassirun say it's called this night because in this night when people obey allah allah really appreciates it that the, this is the night of allah appreciating the worship of and the ibadah of his slave and obviously so appreciated it is that he counts this one night's worship as how many a thousand months right so a thousand alf khairu min alf better more than a thousand months so it's not even it is a thousand months it is better than a thousand months so he went even further than a thousand months subhanallah then finally وقيل الخليل سميت ليلة القدر لأن الأرض تضيق فيها بالملائكة. The word قدر in Arabic has one more meaning that's also used in the Quran, and that is constriction, congestion, to be stuck in something. So Allah Azza wa Jalla, for example, in Surah Al-Talaq, He says, "وَمَنْ قُدِرَ عَلَيْهِ لِسْقُهُ." Whoever his provision became tight on him, meaning their budget became tight, right? We also read in Juz Amma before, "وَأَمَّا إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ فَقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ لِسْقُهُ." Right? Uh, whoever we test and we take his risk and we make it tight, their budget becomes constrained. They don't have as loose an opportunity to spend cash anymore. It becomes restrictive on them. So this tightness, liq, is also part of the meaning of qadr, and it's called that also. That meaning is injected in it also because so many angels descend on the earth that the space becomes tight. Subhanallah. All of these meanings of the nobility of the night, the decree of the night. Also, qadr means power. Also, so the power of the night. Then the tightness because of the descent of all those angels. All of these meanings are embedded in one word. Now, if you take any of these, any alternatives of qadr, if you say Laylat al Shab, the night of nobility, then all the other meanings are gone. If you say the night of you know power, then all the other meanings are gone. But Allah Azza wa Jal picked the perfect word which captures all these beautiful implications all at the same time without compromising the integrity of of uh, the meaning. Subhanallah. So Al Bikaari, uh, rahimahullah. He says, again, just commenting again on the who, he says it is an indication that the love of the Qur'an and the recognition of the Qur'an lies in every heart. That's why it is enough to say. وَمَا أَضْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ Another interesting comment about مَا أَضْرَاكَ the, the amazing language. If, if we just get to finish مَا أَضْرَاكَ I think I'll be happy for this evening inshaAllah ta'ala. First of all, مَا in Arabic is used uh, for many purposes. One of them is التعجب. To give you a sense of awe, okay, to, to make you, uh, to, to surprise you even. One of the, I think, to give you a sense of how this should be translated, what in the world could possibly make you realize? What in the world could possibly give you a clue what Laylatul Qadr really is? What it really is? Now, the, it's different from saying when it is. See, all of our discussion has become what about Laylatul Qadr? When is it? But what's the question Allah is highlighting? Not when is it, but what is it? What, what, do you realize what amazing thing this is? What you have before? This is مَا لِلْتَعَجُّبْ This is one. With تَفْخِيمْ also to, to, to give it gravity. To you understand this is a very strong subject, very heavy thing. And so to give us a clue of what makes this night so incredible, the rest of the surah actually answers this question. Doesn't it? لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهَرْ تَنَزُلُ الْمَلَائِكَ So the entire definition of what Laylatul Qadr actually is has been given. One of the mercies that Alusi rahimahullah mentioned for us not knowing for sure which night it is. You know, there, there are many benefits to that actually. One of them you may have heard, one is laziness of course, take all 29 days of Ramadan off, show up for Laylatul Qadr. That would have happened. That's one possibility, right? That fitna would have been created. But another benefit, actually uh, we, we learned from a hadith of the Prophet I'll paraphrase for you. He's traveling, he's going with Ali radiallahu anhu. And there's a Bedouin sleeping in the masjid. And it's time for salah. So he tells Ali radiallahu anhu, go wake him up. Go wake him up. So he goes and wakes him up for salah. Then Ali radiallahu anhu says, this is a good deed. Why did he not do it himself? You know, the messenger is the first to engage in a good deed. So why would he tell me to do it? Why not do it himself? So he asked the messenger, why did you not take advantage of this opportunity? Why did you send me? He said, well, if I tried to wake him up and he brushed me aside and he didn't listen, then he would have been in deep sin. But if you do it, then that's okay. You understand? So the fact that the messenger sent Ali radiallahu anhu was an act of mercy towards the guy who was sleeping. Because if the messenger is waking you up, man, 
That's no joke. And you, you know, I don't, I'm sleepy right now. You don't even realize who you're talking to. What kind of trouble you land yourself into, right? So uh, Lucy rahimahullah comments, the fact that we don't know what Laylatul Qadr is, perhaps one of the gifts of that is, the one who even after knowing it, still doesn't appreciate it, what kind of trouble would they be in? What kind of hole would they be in? That after you knew what the worth of this night is, you still kick it to the side. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us find Laylatul Qadr every single Ramadan.